Toronto, 2002. My friend David emails me to say that he's dating Jean Stilwell and that he'd like to bring her for dinner. Jean Stilwell? <laughs> I loved Jean Stilwell since 1992 when I sat in the audience at Roy Thompson Hall and I watched her perform with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. For 10 years, I've carried with me this vivid memory of a powerful woman standing fearless, or so I thought, in front of an orchestra. I write him back, David, are you serious? And then I tell John, Jean Stilwell is coming for dinner, and he says, who? I wish I could tell you more about that dinner, but we drank a serious amount of Wolf Last Yellow Label. Yes, we did. What I can tell you, though, is that through that evening, Jean unzips my perceptions of what a diva is all about. About a month later, David emailed me again to say that he and Jeannie had broken up. So. I do what I have to do. I write him back. David, I know that you and Jeannie have broken up, but do you mind if I keep seeing her? <laughs> I was totally indifferent when it started. Broken heart, it's not a thing I like to be. So when he asked me to the movies, I said, well, that might be okay. A decent way to spend an hour or two or three. I maintained a cool composure throughout dinner, and I thought that he was nice, but nothing more. And after some Chablis, it's true, there was a longing glance or two while walking through the village to my door. I had a real nice time, I said, and softly tilted back my head. And if he was surprised, he didn't look it. I said, I don't usually do this, but I've got some tea upstairs. And he gently took my hand, and then he shook it. Is there anything more sexy than an apathetic man? Possibly more set your soul on fire than a man who holds you to him and with eyes of darkest brown looks right through you with complete lack of desire. No, there's nothing more arousing than an apathetic man. Nothing builds your fever pitch to point of blister than a soft and sultry baritone who whispers in your ear. Well, I think of you more like you know. A sister. I used to think attentive men were better to adore than who champagne, caviar, and then on to me. But nothing in the world can make my heart scream, Take me more than a man who says that he can take or leave me. Is there any drug more potent than an apathetic man? Friends have screamed at me to quit to no avail. Why take chances on relationships with men that might work out when you've got one that you know is doomed to fail? There's no better science project than an apathetic man, though he's really not a theory you can prove. That won't stop you from the hundreds of experiments you'll try, thinking you're the one who's gonna make him move. So you don a fuzzy sweater in a lovely shade of pink, trace a sweet vanilla path behind your ear. Then you bat your baby blue eyes as you sit upon his lap, and he murmurs, oh, that's right, are you still here? Pathetic man. Ladies, try one. They're not too hard to find. Why 
I spend time with friends and family when you can spend your life wondering what the hell is going through his mind? Now there's nothing that's more moony than an apathetic man, though you're sure to make him yours the twelfth of never. So remember, if you want to love with passion unconstricted, bypass spitten, slightly interested, and woefully conflicted, for you'll find the vice that's sure to make you totally addicted is the eye.